do, everybody? Welcome to Variety Conversation. I am Lady Walker. This story has made its way all over social media and the internet. What story, lady? Well, Hillsong Church, which is a mega church in New Jersey, lead pastor, 42-year-old Carl Lentz, has been fired due to moral failures, a.k.a. adultery. Also, his 40-year-old wife, Laura, has been fired too. What you say now? Yes, y'all, the church has a policy that if a married couple both work at the church and one of them is terminated, the other one will be fired immediately too. How about that? Because of his moral failures, she lost her job too. As if the infidelity wasn't bad enough. Okie doke. Anyway, Carl had a five-month affair with 34-year-old fashion designer Raining, a Palestinian whom he met in Dominion Park in Williamsburg in May of this year. Now, what Rainey said, or should I say Raining, the mistress, has been speaking out to various media outlets about the alleged five months affair. And the reason for her speaking out about it was because she was upset that he told the world via his Instagram that the relationship that he had with this young lady was a one-time affair when it was more than just that. It wasn't a one-time affair. It went on for five months months feelings were involved now according to her this is how they came to know of each other she said that she was looking for somewhere to sit with her dog okay so carl being in the park offered to share his circle with her what do you mean he offered to share his circle with her well, the park has designated circles marked where visitors can linger while maintaining social distancing. How about that? The park has drawn circles. This would give sufficient room where the visitors don't have to sit close to each other. So he had a circle and he offered her the opportunity to sit in his circle, which is interesting because of COVID. Why would you invite a stranger? to sit in your circle, okay? Anyway, she said that uh, um, they struck up a conversation and he told her that he was a sports agent. And then somewhere else, it said that she said he works with celebrities, okay? So I don't know which one he told her, probably both, I don't know. And of course, he's friend with Justin Bieber. Well, he was, but he didn't tell her that at that time. He wasn't wearing a wedding ring. He wouldn't give his last name because he didn't want her Googling him, which is something that I can surely understand because when you are a person of such statue, you don't want everybody that you come into contact with to know exactly what you do because you don't know what agenda they may have when they find out who you really are, okay? Anywho, he insisted that she gets to know him personally. I don't understand that. Why? <laughs> what was that? That was an invitation, okay, to, hey, I want to get to know you more. Okay, we just met, but I want to get to know you more. Anywho, they exchanged phone numbers. Why would that happen? Why would they exchange phone numbers? Sometimes when a man and a woman meet for the first time, the man would give his number and the woman may not give hers. But, you know, in this instance, they both exchanged phone numbers. So the next day, they met again in the port. More than likely, they probably agreed to meet again in the park. So it was said that she asked him if he was married and he told her that he has been married for 17 years and that he has three children. But then in another article, it said that she didn't ask about his marital status until after they have had a few dates. So the inconsistency with that little bit of information is off. She said that she only learned about his true identity as a pastor after she bought an app and ran a background check on his phone number. Now, that's something in and of itself that you can buy an app and you can run somebody's phone number. That's good to know, especially when you find somebody that you're interested in and y'all started having conversation or dialoguing together and you want to know if this person is on the up and up. Let me find out who this person really is. That's all good and dandy. But on another side of that is if you got somebody who is, is in danger and that person can get an app and run your phone number and find out where you are now, that's a something different. So anyway, 
I guess after running that phone number and getting a background check on him, she realized that she had been to Hillsong Church many years ago and she saw him preach. Now, on one article, it said that her husband, her ex-husband brought her there. And then on another article, it said that a friend took her there during her divorce. So there is another to the bit of inconsistency. Baby girl, when you give your story, you got to be consistent with your detailed information. Okay. She said that when he finally came to her home, they were sitting and he asked her if he could put his hands on her thighs. Oh my word. It was awkward, she said. He didn't know how to act. He was timid, acting like he was a virgin. Now, first of all, if I give someone the opportunity to come to my house for the first time, why would you ask, could you put your hands on my thighs? It's not that kind of visitation. We're not going there. Sort of make you wonder what kind of woman is she? Man, for the first time with him coming to her place, she allowed him to put his hands on her thighs. She knew where that was going to go, but by that time, she already knew who he was. So from there, she was up to no good as well. He was wrong. And uh, uh, she said that Carl continued, she and Carl continued to see each other for several months. He told her that the most beautiful women come from the Middle East. He referred to her as his Middle Eastern unicorn woman. How about that? <laughs> She described evenings where they would have tequila at her home and would admit that he felt guilty for cheating on his wife. Yes, many a times when he came over, they would, you know, get high on tequila. I never had that. I don't know what it tastes like. Don't ever want to know what it tastes like. But um, it's an alcohol evidently and you can drink too much and get high. She said that she tried to end the relationship multiple times, but Carl continued to pursue her. Which means that when he was visiting her, I'm pretty sure every time it was, it led to sex. Not just drinking tequila, but that led to sex. She said that every time he would message or call her and she didn't answer, he would send even more messages and he would go crazy. I guess you can say she put some good loving on him. <laughs> In one of L. Green's song of yesteryear, he said that love would make y'all do wrong. And also love would make you do right. It would make you come home early. It would make you stay out all night long. Okay, she said he's a professional narcissistic and lies too much. Uh-huh. She said that after he told the world via his Instagram that it was a one-time affair. She insisted that the relationship was much more than sex. She said she loves him and he loves her. Okay, she said that it was a love relationship that was not planned. I'm pretty sure it was, especially on her end. Uh huh. She said that they were obsessed with each other. They were seeing each other twice a week. They were like each other's drug. She wondered if the restraints imposed by the coronavirus pandemic had fueled the relationship because he hadn't been doing anything for so many months. He hadn't been on stage. What else was going on in his life? Well, hey, if he was with his wife and his kids, you would think that would have been enough, okay? She said he needed to do something that would excite him, as if his wife couldn't do that. Now, I know sometimes as couples, you seeing each other every day, you're staying in the same house, sleeping in the same bed for most people. You got to work at making or bringing about excitement. If you don't like each other, if you are having marital arguments and abuse and everything else is involved in that relationship, I can understand nobody wants to put forth the effort to bring forth excitement into that relationship. And she also said, now this is her theory, he could be going through midlife crisis. Yeah, right. Go and cheat on his wife. Some of us have heard that when a man goes through midlife crisis, that he will try to hook up with someone else that's younger than he or his partner or whatever, or even go and get a red convertible, you know, just do some things. All righty. She said everything came crashing down when his wife and his job saw their texts on his phone. All his messages are linked from the iCloud. 
and uh, she said he's not a good cheater. And of course, his wife saw it, and then she had people in the in the office with her, and they saw it. Can you imagine all the things that were said and the sexing and all of that? Woo! And having a five month long relationship. Can you imagine the conversation that those two were having? Anywho, they broke up November the 5th, the day he revealed his infidelity to the world. She said that after the implosion, Carl came over to say goodbye in person and the couple was intimate again. Okay, it was that goodbye sex. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was off the chain. Okay, it was off the chain. He told her that he will always love her and was sorry for the pain he has caused her, but had to go back to his wife. Mm, 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 that goodbye sex. <laughs> Let's just kiss and say goodbye. Also, this reminds me of one of William Bell's songs of yesteryear entitled Trying to Love Too. Ain't easy to do. Oh, it started out with lots of fun, but now it got me on the run. Jumping in and out the bed, keep messing with my head, trying to love too. Yeah. So, she said that by speaking out, other people will have the courage to speak out too. Girl, please, bye. You spoke out because you are upset, got angry, got mad because he told the world via Instagram that it was a one-time affair. Anywho, she said that she's a Muslim and have no knowledge of the Christian's world. Y'all, before people in such leadership position get themselves bogged down into such a situation, before they commit infidelity, before they go down the road of self-destruction, they need to count the cost that they will have to pay if they pursue cheating with someone when they are married or already in a committed relationship. What do you stand to lose should be one of the main questions they ask themselves. But uh, I don't think they are going to do a cost analysis of cheating and get in found out many people who cheat the last thing they think about is getting caught until they actually get caught that cause can lead to divorce child support alimony a fall from grace lose your career your friends your integrity your credibility and much more and not only that what if the mistress becomes pregnant that's child support on that end now, I know we are all human. The person who cheated is human. We know that. But you have to take heed not to allow yourself to get tangled up in this kind of situation when you are in such position. Temptation is a doozy and forbidden sex is a doozy. Remember Samson and Deliah. Mm, the lust of it all. You have to keep it in check. Least it consumes you. She knew he was married not long after meeting him. But guess what? She carried on with the relationship. She's a grown woman. He didn't make her enter into an intimate relationship with him. That was of her own volition. And she is not a victim. I don't care how much she speaks out and to whom she speaks out to. She was not forced into that relationship and she is not a victim. And now she's looking for maybe a payday in some way. I'm pretty sure she'll be somewhere in Hollywood by now. Because she is going to keep telling her story to whomever will pay her for her story. She's angry now because she probably won't see him for a while or at all. Listen, if you're in a permanent position and you are married with or without kids and you are caught cheating, it is going to be talked on. It's going to be the talk of the town. At some point in time, it will simmer down. But for now, it is going to be front news because of car status. Bottom line. Also on Instagram, he posted an apology for his moral failures to his wife, his children, and the many people who still trust in him. Also, it is said that he sold his $1.5 million home days before the cheating scandal was found out. Okay, he had days where he was able to get some things in order before he came out with his wrongdoing. Anyway, enough said. If you like this channel, go ahead and subscribe, like, and comment. Also, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload a new video. Oh, feel free to share your perspective on said topic. And in the meantime, be lovers. Y'all come back to visit me when you can. Okie doke. Ta-ta.